in February of 2004, I was 39 years old and I was freaking out about the fact that I was going to be turning 40. I was pretty depressed, bored, just in a rut and sick of being single. I, I wanted to have a boyfriend and maybe even find the man of my dreams. I didn't know how I was going to do that, but I was determined to find how. how. So I happened to be looking in Gay Chicago Magazine one day, and I saw an advertisement for an AIDS bike ride that was to benefit a local AIDS charity. It was to take place in July, and it was from Chicago to Wisconsin. In order to participate, bikers would have to raise a minimum of $1,500. I was so excited about this opportunity. I thought, this is it. This is great. This is going to be what's going to spice up my life and help me meet some guys, and maybe even the man of my dreams would be there on the ride. Well, there were a few obstacles. First of all, I was not very athletic at the time. I didn't own a bike and I really couldn't afford to buy a bike, but I decided I was determined to do it. I bought a bike and I signed up and I really worked hard. I learned how to bike, I got in shape. And by May 1st, I had raised the necessary $1,500 and was so excited. I could not wait to meet all the other bike riders. Well, unfortunately, in the end of May, I got a call from one of the organizers of the event, and he said that the AIDS bike ride was going to be canceled because there weren't enough participants. I, I was devastated. I was so frustrated because this was going to be my opportunity to change things and meet the man, the man of my dreams. What would I do now? But the local charity returned the money to me, and I felt as though I had to do a similar AIDS benefit because people had pledged me all this money, and I didn't want to let them down, and I, I really wanted to help out an AIDS charity. So I went online, and I, I Googled, and I Googled and couldn't find anything locally, but then this event caught my eye. And it was for an AIDS walk and hike. Now, the thing is, it wasn't in Chicago. It wasn't in the United States at all. It was in rural South Africa. And it was for the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation, whose mission was to eradicate pediatric AIDS. And they had promotional material. And there was this photo of this little girl about three years old, and it said, how far would you go to save her life? Then it said that 6 million children around the globe had already died of AIDS. Then I thought to myself, didn't AIDS primarily affect gay men? I was a, a gay man in Chicago, Illinois, living in my own bubble. I really was unaware that AIDS was not only affecting men, but it was affecting children and women as well. So the AIDS walk was scheduled to take place in October, and I just knew in my heart that I needed to do this. What was so intriguing about the possibility of doing this walk is that we were not just walking for the sake of walking. Each day we would hike 15 miles to visit hospitals, clinics, orphanages, to witness firsthand the devastating effects of the AIDS pandemic in Africa. We would have the opportunity to speak to doctors, to scientists to learn about medications that were being used on HIV positive pregnant women to prevent the mother to child transmission of HIV. We would have the opportunity to talk, meet, and actually comfort people that were living with AIDS. But of course, again, there was another small obstacle. Instead of $1,500, I would have to raise $15,000. <laughs> so I was pretty nervous and, and uh, pretty scared to say the least. But again, I signed up anyway, because it was something that I felt that I needed to do. And I became obsessed with learning everything that I could about pediatric AIDS. And quickly, I forgot that I was depressed and turning 40. Somehow getting a boyfriend didn't seem important anymore. My family and friends pretty much thought I was crazy. How could Mark Brown be hiking 50 miles a day and staying intense at night. So began my fundraising. And sadly, by the end of September, I had only raised about $5,000 of the $15,000 that I needed. But then all of a sudden, miracles started to happen. Uh, I 
had to cancel a photo session that was supposed to take place in October when I was on the AIDS walk. And the woman who I was photographing said that she had this friend that used to be a nurse in Africa and that now she was a philanthropist in Chicago and I actually call her. So I, I went ahead and I called this woman, not thinking anything of it, thinking maybe she'll pledge me 25 or a hundred dollars. But after hanging up with the woman, she agreed to pledge $10,000. And that put me over my needed goal of, of $15,000. Then the week before I was going to Africa, I was in the middle of a photo session and just happened to tell the client that I was going to be going to Africa on an AIDS mission. And she said, uh, does Oprah know that you're going? And I was like, uh, how would Oprah know? I mean, like, how would I know Oprah? And then she said, well, I'm a producer at the Oprah show. And would you mind if, if I told Oprah that you were going? And I was like, sure, go ahead and tell Oprah. And not thinking anything of it. Like, um, but then literally two days before I was going to Africa, I got a messenger envelope from the Oprah Winfrey show. And it was an envelope with a handwritten letter from Oprah wishing me well in Africa and thanking me for helping to fight pediatric AIDS. So now my journey in Africa began. On our AIDS walk, there were 50 of the most incredible people from all over the United States. We were from all walks of life, all different races. We were gay, we were straight, we were black, we were white. Many of these people remain my closest friends to this day. Nothing could have prepared us for what we would see. We would see so much poverty, but we would also see so much beauty. There were towns along our route that were so unfamiliar and so underdeveloped. We would pass by people who would have to walk miles and miles in their bare feet just to get to the nearest clinic. Children would run up to me and they would just wanna to touch my skin. They had never seen a white person in their life. I had a camcorder with me and they would scream and laugh every time they saw their faces in the camera. And many of them had not even seen what they look like at all. One day we were at a hospital in Soweto, South Africa. And there were these two wonderful African women that greeted me. They were so beautiful. And one was named Mama G and one was named Florence. They both were wearing these African headdresses. I said to them how beautiful that these headdresses were and joked that I should try wearing one. The next thing I knew, Mama G took off her headdress and Florence put it on my head. We could not stop laughing. Florence told me that she had not laughed that long in a very long time. Fortunately, there was somebody there that took a photo of the three of us and it remains one of my favorite photos of all time, 15 years later. In fact, here it is. And this became my holiday card in 2004 and it was titled Three African Queens. <laughs> so I really got to know Florence on that trip and she told me that she was a caseworker for women who were HIV positive Florence had recently lost both her husband and her five month old baby to AIDS. And she herself was HIV positive. Florence thought that she could no on, go on, but she then discovered fighting pediatric AIDS was her reason for living. She said that no one else should have to go through what she has gone through. Florence and I remained friends to this day. She is still HIV positive, of course, but has never gotten sick. Fortunately, she has since remarried and has two children, now that are ages 10 and 15, both of her children are negative as well as her current husband. When I returned to Chicago after that first trip to Africa, more unexpected things started to happen. I received a call from a producer of the Oprah show asking me if I would be a guest. They were producing a Christmas special and wanted to include people that had made an impact in Africa. So this all started by me signing up for an AIDS ride to shake things up and maybe meet the man of my dreams. In addition to finding a mission and learning so much about myself and the world, my career also began to take off when I got home. One of my fellow walkers who lived in Los Angeles asked if I could visit LA to photograph her family. 
That job led to countless referrals and many of her friends in Los Angeles. And thanks to her, I have so many clients around the country, all because I took a leap of faith and went on this AIDS mission. So much has come back to me tenfold. To this day, my work continues with the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation. I have since returned to Africa many times, most recently in 2017 to Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. On my last journey in Uganda, I decided to take a little side trip to Uganda and go gorilla trekking. Yes, gorilla trekking. It seems like just yesterday that I barely knew how to ride a bike. Now I'm Mark Brown, the gorilla trekker. My story began 15 years ago on a mission to find the love of my life. Perhaps that was not the time to find love, but I found so much more by helping others. And then finally, and very unexpectedly, love found me. 13 years ago, shortly after returning from a trip to Tanzania, I went on a vacation to Saugatuck, Michigan and met my life partner, Steve, and we have been together ever since.